It is Friday, June 14th, 2019, and welcome to this episode of Code Evolution. So I've been working on this project for um, a little while, uh, and it's called Channel Extensions, or Open.Channel Extensions, which if you're familiar with channels, uh, channels is a fundamental, it's essentially a cornerstone of asynchronous programming in .NET. Uh, channels provides a producer-consumer queue where you have a writer and you have a reader, and it really facilitates a lot of essentially like asynchronous stream type operations. Now that C Sharp 8 is going to be having async streams, we're probably going to be seeing things like channels implementing an async enumerable interface. So it'll be a essentially an async collection that can be read from and does have a completion where, you know, once it's done, then you can finish your for loop and continue on. In the meanwhile, what we have is channels is still available and you can do a lot of the asynchronous stream type operations using channels already today. And it does come with .NET standard, uh, which I've been using a lot of it. It's really great. Channels are something that if you're familiar with data flow, you'll be you know familiar with kind of async, uh, you know, like producer consumer type patterns. But channels has really kind of refined it down to this uh, very elegant, simplistic, uh, interface and classes that allow you to do a lot of really, really high-performant producer-consumer type pipelines. Now, the uh, existing channels class is, is, is great, especially if you know what you're doing, but there is a lot of kind of hang-ups to when you're using channels that there's a pattern that you have to follow to, you know, essentially inject uh, entries onto a channel and then to read from that channel and then eventually complete the channel and then stop reading from it, which it's very easy to screw this kind of pattern up if you don't know what you're doing, especially if you're using multiple channels or essentially a multi-segment uh, you know, segment pipeline. So open channel extensions is really intent on simplifying a lot of this process. So I'm going to show you a demonstration uh, of using open channel extensions with something I wrote recently that takes a uh, takes any text file, and for every line of a text file, it basically parses that text file using a regex that you specify, and then converts that regex into um, a set of other files. So it'll split it uh, into different files. Uh, I'm going to refrain from showing the details of these regexes at the moment because these are a little bit private. Uh, they're related to my work, and so I don't want to just kind of show it off. But what I can show you is essentially the performance of it. So I don't know why my uh, terminal does this, but I'm going to run it real quick. It's going to take this source log, and using a default pattern of regex, it's going to process all the lines asynchronously and in parallel, all of the lines in uh, that file, and it's going to do it very quickly. Now, I've had a much larger log file before, and that log, you know, took a very long time to process. So if you imagine if you have a million lines, this can be quite useful. So how do you implement this? Uh, this how do you implement channels in this case? Well, if you were to write it, if you were to set up your own channel uh, pipeline, you'd have to come in here and basically do something simpler, simple like this. You say var, you know, channel equals uh, channel with capital C. Okay, come on, guy, here we go. In my case, it's uh, it's not automatically imported, so I'm going to go and say, you know, setting.channels. And then you can pick what kind of a channel you need. Typically speaking, you should probably go with what's called a bounded channel. So a bounded uh, channel dot create bounded. okay? Uh, you can then specify the type. Let's say it's a string. Uh, and then you can specify a capacity, so like maybe 100, for example, right? And there are some other things you can do, like you can say new... Uh, bounded channel options, okay, uh, which you also need to pass a capacity. You you have can pass up. You need to pass. Ah. <laughs> you need to pass a capacity is here as well, uh, and then in here you can specify certain things like is it a single reader, a single writer, uh, is it does it allow asynchronous continuations. These are all very useful um, things if you want to optimize. And typically speaking, you probably should per set a single reader or single writer depending on your configuration. But for now, I'm just demonstrating to you how you set up a channel. So in this case, it's a bounded channel. Now, if you wanted to write to a channel, you could say channel dot, uh, and in this case, you say writer. Okay, so every channel has a writer and a reader. 
and I want to take writer and I want to write uh, to uh, wait. There's all these different things that you can do, but the simplest one that you could keep in mind is just I want to write to the channel, so I'm going to write async uh, a value called hello, okay, and I would have to await that. And the reason why this exists is because if you have a bounded channel and you've reached your um, extends uh, your extent of that capacity, this would actually be uh, told to wait. So it would be put on you put on the scheduler and waited and, and awaited until there was room for it to fit on the channel. If by chance the channel was closed, so if by chance I did something like this, and I say uh, complete a, uh, so we'll say comp oh, we have sorry we have to go com channel dot writer dot complete. Okay, uh, that would close the channel. And therefore, a write async would never actually complete, and you would actually get an exception here that would be a, would be a th it would be a closed channel exception, um, so you couldn't actually write to it. But let's say if you needed to do something more conditional, you can do dot try write, which is a synchronous operation, uh, where you could say I want to write hello, okay, and it's going to return a boolean. So you could say if that worked, then do something else. This gets really, there's a lot of features here in channels, but after a while it's kind of like uh, a lot of boilerplate and you have to write a lot of code to get to where you want to go. And, and for the most part, most common operations are pretty straightforward. Um, so that's why open uh, channel extensions is really useful. And here's an example here. So again, this regex line extractor uses channels in two places. I have uh, a file here called that it was a, kind of a remake of a utility that I call um, an async file writer. In this case, it's called the async line writer. And what the async line writer does is it takes and it creates a specific type of channel. It then, uh, using that channel, it says, hey, I'm going to set up a, I'm going to set up a completion based upon reading all of the lines from there, uh, from that channel, and I'm going to pipeline the, that through that channel to the file. So it's a little complex, complex to talk about here, but simply this is just setting up the pipeline by which this async um, file, this async line writer will accept lines and automatically in order and without any concurrency problems or any kind of uh, contention, will just write to a file as expected. So that's being done here. You'll see there I set up the channel and I also do, this is one of the extensions that comes along with uh, the uh, you know, the open channel extensions library. So we're going to close this and we're going to focus more on the simple case here where for this particular file we go ahead and follow there's an extension here called read lines and so read lines is uh, you know actually it's read lines is actually part of a file sorry and uh, read lines you know I just set up all I'm doing is setting up the innumerable of, of, of these lines okay uh, and we select all these, we actually, in this particular case, this is a pattern file, so don't get it wrong. All this is reading is one, two, three, maybe four files, and we set up our pattern. So that's not part of this equation, but it's just getting our patterns in place. We kind of set up some of our directories based on what patterns we want to use, and then we're going to get into the actual channels. So in this case, uh, there's an extension for taking a stream reader and converting it into a channel. Right? It's really simple. You just say, oh, you have a stream reader. I'm going to convert it to a channel. The channel will then automatically read from the stream anything that the stream has and, and turn it into essentially what is appears to be, you know, uh, it, it buffers it into a channel for you. Okay. So by having, uh, you know, that, that type of interface and also creating kind of this buffer of 100, you can really expediently pull it into a channel. And then this extension here, which is read all concurrently async, I specify a max concurrency of four, and then it's, it, it partitions out any of the incoming uh, items in the channel to four different potential other channels that it then says, hey, up to a, a certain limit, uh, which I, you know, I think we sp is basically um, you know, essentially a default uh, of, I think, the same channel. Anyway, so it, it basically say it takes in that individual line and it's spreading them out across four threads and automatically does whatever it needs to do inside that. But the beauty of all this is that once this is done, it automatically completes, once it's read everything from the source, it automatically completes and, and completes on this await 
and returns a total of the number of items that was processed. So this is really useful because if I was to write the channel itself, it would be kind of a longer boilerplate thing with a little bit more possibility for error. And in this case, the ch these extensions cover all those cases for you. There's also some other useful utilities, like for example, uh, for a channel, you might have this um, uh, channel here, like I, I've, I probably showed you here earlier uh, in the other, where are we at here? If we go to async file writer, uh, there was a case where I was building out this channel and you can also do things like you can say for that channel, you can say dot complete async, which is really a shortcut for doing, uh, it's just a short, it's literally just a shortcut for going channel dot uh, complete uh, that writer that complete and then you're doing channel dot reader dot completion and waiting it's so common to do to use this pattern it's just much easier to have something like that right so there's an example of that uh, that usage so that's the overview. I don't want to go too far in depth. I just wanted this to be an introduction. If people are getting more and more into asynchronous programming or asynchronous pipelines, um, I know you know uh, the .NET team has a pipelines uh, library that uses, I think, channels under the hood. This is more for just kind of if you're using channels and you want to simplify the operations of it, these channel extensions should save you a lot of time. And just as kind of a final overview, here's the actual library itself. You'll see that there are a variety of, of awesome extensions here rating, uh, ranging, I mean, <clears throat> varying from read, read concurrently, you, sources for if you want to get an actual channel from something like an enumerable, uh, transform, uh, which is simply a, a synchronous um, transformation for each item that gets pulled from the reader. Uh, there's a type filter. There's... Uh, you may be able to do join and batch. So like if you have a bunch of things, you can turn them into batches and then you can also rejoin them later. So you can have this really, really uh, extensive uh, pipeline going on here. For example, there's if you'll go to the actual GitHub here, you'll see you know some examples of creating a bounded uh, channel and even pipelining it through other channels in order to do special transformations or other processes or pre-processing before moving on to another phase in your pipeline. So I think that's about it. Um, this was really an impromptu kind of off the cuff uh, thing. I've been having a lot of success with using this library and I really appreciate uh, channels as a tool for doing asynchronous programming. So I hope that this helps anyone uh, in doing their job and uh, we're gonna sign off for now and see you next time.